Isaiah chapter 55, the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter, and we're going to begin at verse 1, the great work of the prophet Isaiah, my all-time favorite prophet. Every time we quote from him and use him, I always am just so blessed. I get to preach out of that tremendous book. He is my favorite, favorite prophet. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 1, say amen if you have it. The word of God declares with an invitation to the thirsty, Come, all of you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread? Huh. And your labor on what does not satisfy. Listen. Listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. God, we pray this morning that your word will go forth and it will accomplish its purpose for which you sent it by your spirit in Jesus name. And everyone said amen, amen. and amen. Tell somebody no money down. You may be seated in the house of God. No money down. No money down. Amen. No money down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It, you know, a lot of times they tell you to buy something with no money down, and you know you've got a big old balloon payment coming. Yeah, amen. Amen. I, I want to I wanna deal with finances in the sense of uh, not... Physically or, or, or in the, in the uh, economic sense per se. But I want to deal with the finances of life. I want to deal with the commodities of your soul. I want to deal with the investments of your time and your energy and your essence of who you are. With your, your spirit, your, your, your mind, everything that concerns you. I want to deal with that as investments this month. We are constantly bombarded by the internet and by television to buy and to sell and to invest and to purchase. And uh, all you have to do is pick up a newspaper if, if we even do that anymore. Most newspapers are about their, on their way out of business these days because the internet is so huge. And people get their news from the internet and from television and social media now. Uh, but it, all you have to do is, is access some form of media and there's going to be an exhortation or something there, or an invitation to grab your attention and tell you that you should buy this thing or buy that thing and there's a sale or there's, there, there's something that's going to expire in 10 days. You need to use it now. You need to buy it now. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We get bombarded by the world system telling us what we should buy, what we shouldn't buy. This is a good buy. That's not a good buy. Good investment, bad investment. Well, the word of God is replete and complete and full of advice concerning good and great investments. This morning, I want to deal with the first one, and I've called it no money down. Look at verse one with me one more time of Isaiah 55. Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat, come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. A couple of times there in that verse, it says no money and without money. Now, I don't know if you have money or not this morning. I know that you do, actually. I, I don't even have to lie. I know you got money. Look at you, prosperous as can be, my God. See, I'm glad you're up this close this morning because I get to see how prosperous you look. Amen. Amen. You look rich. I paid you a compliment. You ought to praise God. I said, you look rich. Amen. Amen. You look prosperous. You look wealthy. You look like you're in a wealthy place. You don't look broke, busted, and disgusted. Amen. Amen. I told you, God told me, so you preach this congregation to prosperity. Now they're out enjoying it. Amen. But there, there is a, 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 an admonition in the word of God that tells us that we can take what we have and what we don't have and receive and buy and purchase. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to go buy something with no money. That's rough. Because if you don't have any money, ultimately they're going to tell you to leave. Yeah. 
But God says that there is a way in which you can purchase something with no money. Now, we're going to get into it in a minute. How can you purchase something with no money? That's amazing. I'm not talking about good credit. Sometimes good credit will get you something, but ultimately you have to pay for it. God says, no, there, there is something in the dynamics of my kingdom, in the economic structure of the kingdom of God that allows you and enables you to buy something without any money. God gives us an invitation here through the prophet Isaiah to the children of Israel. And he uses money, he uses wine, he uses milk, he uses water, he uses things that are uh, germane to our sustenance and our existence and our life, things that were important to us uh, that, to get our attention. And it's a metaphor, he uses these metaphors, so it's a metaphorical appeal. And he was giving that appeal to the exiles to seek God. Why? Because they were going to come out of Babylon. They were going to be restored back to the land of Israel and back to Judah and back to Jerusalem. And he was saying this, when you get there, you're not going to have a lot of finances because you're coming out of, an imp of, a, of a, a, a place of prosperity, but you're impoverished because you were in slavery. So I'm going to restore you back to the land. And I'm telling you that you're not, you may not have a lot of money. And I know that what you're going to use, you're going to use ultimately to build your houses. And then we're going to build the kingdom. And we're going to redo the walls. And we're going to redo the temple. And it's going to be all good. But there's something that you're going to need more than anything. And guess what? You don't have to have any money to buy it. The reason why he uses that language is because it recalls the cries of the street vendors and the hawkers on the streets of Babylon as the children of Israel were in, encapsulated there and they were in captivity there. And, and the, the, the merchants would be on the street. You know, you ever go to, 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 to Tijuana? Any Tijuana folk in here? You ever been there? Come on. You cross that little border and go over there. And you know, the minute you get over that border, what are they doing? You, know, you, want, you want to buy gum? Chicle, chicle. Little kids on the street. People selling you, don't buy the gold on the street. It's not real gold. Yeah. Do not buy. The, it looks good, but all that glitters ain't gold. Hey, but don't buy that stuff on the street. Go into the stores and make sure it's legitimate. Do you understand? That's not real gold. It's not real silver. And then they got all these things. They, and and they're, 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 they're calling to you. Why? Trying to get your attention. When I was 18 years old, uh, I worked on, uh, at Fisherman's Wharf. And I used to wear one of them green aprons, wrap around ap aprons, and I used to crack crab and sell shrimp cocktails and crab cocktails and, and fish and all those things. And we used to have to stand there. I was 18 years old. Crab cocktails, get your crab. And all the tourists would come by and, and look at the crabs and, and everything. Are those alive? Yes, ma'am, those are alive. Yes. One lady, I'll never forget, she said, is that a, a crab? I said, she was from somewhere, I don't know. I said, I said, no, that's a very large sea spider. And she said, oh, Horace, look at this. Look at this sea spider over here. <laughs> I used to have fun. But I remember having to call people's attention. And because there was what? There was competition. Yeah. There was competition. I said there was competition. I said there was competition. So I had, to, I had to look as good as I could and be as dynamic as I could be to get the attention of the tourists to come over and buy our stuff instead of the people on the sides of me because there are all these little vendors down there. So I'm saying, hey, right over here, this is the best fish, fresh. It wasn't fresh, guaranteed. I'm going to bust everybody out now. You know those little things you buy that got a little cup of crab in it from, on Fisherman's Wharf? A little cup like that. They charge you about $14, a little cup of crab like that. Put a little sauce on it, tell you it's fresh. It's not. It comes out of a can. I just busted it. I just rained on everybody's parade now. It's true. It's true. I know because I used to take the cans out, open them, making those little things and put them in the ice. 
See? Yeah. Competition, however, was so great that you had to really sell your product in order to get people to buy it and to come to you. I am aware this day and in this generation and especially in the society in which we live that competition for your time, competition for your heart, competition for your energy, for your mental focus, for everything that you are is so great. The world pulls on you. The media pulls on you. Economics pull on you. Social media pull on everything saying, come here, come here and do this and buy this. And the, the, the place in which we live, we, some people live in places where there ain't much going on but a bowling alley. That's about it. You know, you go through some towns, there, if there's a bowling alley in there, you got to be, you're lucky. But here in this area, in this economic strata in which we live, you have everything. You have all kinds of activity and things and entertainment that call to you and want to get your attention. And why do you hear the first word in Isaiah's prophetic invitation that says, come? Because God is trying to get you to come out apart from everything and everyone else and get alone with Him and spend some time with Him and get off the phone and run to the throne. Uh, get under the spout where the glory comes out. He's trying to get you into a place and into a time and into a space and a season where He can minister to you and it's not going to cost you anything except your effort and your energy. That's all it's going to take. Put a little time aside. Put a little energy aside. And God says, if you'll come to me, oh, hallelujah. I will refresh you and I'll restore you in a way that the things of this world cannot even compare to. Oh, hallelujah. That's why the word is so strong. Come. Hurry. Get here as soon as you can. Make haste. Don't let anything stop you. Get over here as soon as you can. The exiles are being summoned to return to the things of God and to be restored to God. They've been in a land for years without true worship. We're in a place today, we're in a country today that doesn't even understand. We got more worship conferences in this country than any other place in the world. And people still don't know how to worship. They think that a worship conference is trying to tell you how many guitars you should have and how many singers you should have and how much, how much artificial smoke you should have on the platform and what kind of lighting you should... You think I'm kidding. That's got nothing to do with worship. Those are just as much, listen to me, those are, ju those are just as much gimmicks and trappings as the old, old, old system of worship with, with smoke and incense when the priest would be doing like this and throwing water around. Same stuff. No, worship is when you lay your heart and you lay your life on the altar of God's grace and His mercy. You surrender yourself and you say, I am what I am because of your grace. I am what I am because of your love. I am what I am because of your mercy. And I owe you everything. I owe you everything. I owe you everything. My whole heart, my whole soul, my whole life I give to you. I hold nothing back. That's worship. He says, come back to me and be restored. He identifies the nature of the person who's being spoken to. Come, all you who are thirsty. The word thirsty there is a, a word in the Hebrew that, that intimates spiritual thirst. It's not physical thirst, it's spiritual thirst. Come to me, all of you who are spiritually thirsty. But I'm glad he says where to go to. He says, come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. 
Waters is figurative. It, 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 it represents spiritual refreshment. So for the spiritually thirsty, there is spiritual refreshment. I don't know if you've ever been in a dry place or a hot place and you found, you found a place that had a, a spring of water. I, I used to go up to uh, uh, Auburn, California, up to that area in Grass Valley, and it would get really, really hot over there. And, and there was a, a little spring by the side of the road on, on the highway called Bitney Springs. And this, this place... There, there was just this little pipe that stuck up out of the ground like that. And water came out of that thing all the time. It never stopped. It just flowed and flowed. And it was some of the best water I think I've ever had in my life. And people would drive for miles with big old bottles and things like that. And they'd fill them up at that little spring there. And then they'd take them home. It was some of the most amazing, refreshing water I'd ever had in my life. Can I tell you something? There is a spring in the presence of God uh, that has the greatest refreshment you'll ever know in your life. You can't get it anywhere else. Uh, Crystal Geyser doesn't make that. Arrowhead doesn't make that. Uh, Alhambra doesn't make that. Uh, uh, not even the, the water I drink every Sunday and Wednesday called Metro Mint. Y'all don't even know. It's delicious. Anyway, praise God. That's not even as good as the spring of water that God has to satisfy the spiritual thirst in your life you've got to get there though you got to get to that spring that's why he says come it's imperative this is not casual this is not come if you want to this is come if you're thirsty sometimes we recognize in our lives that we get to a place where we're just thirsty we try everything else and it doesn't work. We try everything and it doesn't satisfy. It comes up short. Entertainment comes up short. New clothes come up short. Because guess what? They're not new after you buy them. Amen. That new car smell does wear off after a while. Amen. That movie you saw that was so amazing, but three days later you can't even remember the title. But I came to tell you that there is something in the presence of God that you can get a hold of and it will refresh you and restore you and it's ongoing it'll never stop it'll never dissipate it'll never grow old it'll never weaken in its power and its intensity to restore your life and God is saying if you're thirsty come on to me yeah. hallelujah yeah. hallelujah, hallelujah. Do I have a witness in here? Is there anybody here who's ever drank at those springs? Is there anybody here who's ever even had a sip? When I was a kid and we were real thirsty and real poor, we used to be real thirsty and real poor. We was more poor than thirsty. Yeah, so broke I couldn't pay attention. Amen. Amen. And, and so, so we'd be playing outside when we were kids, and sometimes we would maybe have two pennies, me and, and, and a few other kids. And, and so, so, so we'd pull all the little pennies together and go to the store and buy a bottle of pop, a bottle of soda. And then we all have to share that bottle. I remember, give me a zip. We say zip, we say zip. Y'all don't remember, I know. We say, give me a zip, man. And we just sit there and watch, watch the bottle. Hey, man, you had too much. Come on, save some for me. Give me a zip. And we drink a little bit, and then somebody snatches it out of your hand. Come, that's mine. Come on, don't drink it all up. And boy, God help you if you drank the last drop. I came to tell you something this morning that God says, I've got a supply just for you. Uh, you don't even have to share it with anybody. Whew. It's just for you. He says, come to me, all you who are spiritually thirsty, and I will give you spiritual refreshment at the waters of, of my grace and the waters of my mercy and the waters of my love. It's a call to those who are dissatisfied with the things of life. He said, you tried all the delicacies of Babylon. You tried all the delicacies of those foreign kingdoms. You tried those things and they, they just didn't satisfy. Some of them were foreign to you. Some of them, you, you had trouble trying to eat them in the first place because you weren't raised on them. I remember the first time I ever ate snails. I got a couple of witnesses in here. No. You know what? The sight of them just... Yeah. See, you, they dress them up with a fancy name, so you eat them. Escargot. Yeah. yeah. 
It's going to go all right. Amen. They were delicious, though. I couldn't believe it. They tasted so good, but it took a minute to get used to it. Yeah. The things of this world, they, they take a minute to get used to, and some of them are good and some of them are not. But you know what? Ultimately, they leave you dissatisfied. They leave you wanting more. I don't care how many new cars you have, you go on another one. I don't care how many movies you see, you're going to want to see another one. I don't care how many suits you buy, you're going to want to... Amen. I was talking to somebody the other day, they were talking about losing weight. I said, well, that's good for you. He said, yeah, I get to go buy more suits. Amen. That's come from a suit guy. Yeah. There are things in this life that do not satisfy like they promise. You come up short. God says, look, I've got something for you that will not only meet your physical and emotional needs, but it'll meet all of your spiritual needs. And you don't have to starve of spiritual hunger. You don't have to die of spiritual thirst. I've got daily provision for you and I'm offering it to you to feed your soul. And here's the deal. Watch this. No money down. <laughs> 